Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Shop Thursday. You know what this is all about. It's when you sit around with your friends drinking coffee on this fine autumn day, and, and maybe even you find yourself a pumpkin muffin, I guess. Mm. Oh, yeah. Man, that is so good, you know. I wish it was fall all year long. If you can have pumpkin muffins like that. I mean, come on. Why can't you have them in Easter? Why can't you have them in June? I don't I don't understand. People just keep them for the fall months. Well, all right. Even though that's the case, I'll enjoy it. So go grab yourself one, wash it down with some coffee. Sit around with your friends and pull out your Bibles because we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Remember, we're, we're moving our way through the book of Hebrews. And now we're getting to the point where it's already been mentioned. But now we're going to be talking more and more and more about Jesus as our great high priest. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, high priest? Um, you know, that's, that's the Jewish things. But... I don't really remember Jesus saying anything about being the high priest when he did his ministry. And in fact, isn't he often at odds with the high priest? Yes, very, very much so with all the priests that were in the temple. So what's going on with this talk about Jesus being our great high priest? You have to remember, there was no New Testament yet. It's, it hasn't been written. The people had as their scriptures, the Old Testament. What we have, okay? They also had oral tradition, which had been going on for centuries, but that hadn't been written down yet. That's not written down into the Mishnah until about the year 200. So now you're in that in-between time where there's all this oral tradition floating around and the Old Testament, and now Jesus is on the scene. And if you recall, we talked about the, the letter to the Hebrews is actually a sermon that was put into written form later on. So it's a sermon that's telling the people to, uh, to hang in there with your faith, your faith being the Jewish faith. But only now the Messiah is here and it's Jesus. But he's, he's more than the Messiah. He is the ultimate high priest. And that's what, what the book of Hebrews is really telling us. It's, and it's unique in its flavor of saying that. If we didn't have the book of Hebrews, we wouldn't have all this talk about Jesus being the great high priest. So what's happening, especially uh, as we move along in the book of Hebrews, this is where the emphasis is going to be placed. And it really starts here in chapter 5. And it, the very first verses talk about what a high priest is. It's The high priest is the person who offers intercession for the people, interceding on behalf of the people before God for all their their wrongdoings, their sins. But it also says here that, don't forget, this high priest is also a human being. And so it's necessary because, you know, he's going to make mistakes too, that he has to offer sacrifices for himself. Yeah, he really does. He has to do that in order to be properly prepared to do it for the people but now it goes on a, a little step further and starts talking about jesus in particular jesus is our great high priest how can we say that well he starts by um quoting two two parts of two different psalms psalm 2 and also psalm 110 psalm 2 is the reference to uh him being called, you are my son, today I've begotten you. Yeah, that's in Psalm 2. And we, didn't we hear that at his baptism? Mm -hmm. Okay, and also, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek? Who's that? Okay, there's only one other reference to Melchizedek other than in the book of Hebrews in the whole Bible. And remember, we're talking the Older Testament, the Bible of the people, and that's way back in Genesis. And it's an encounter between Abraham and Melchizedek, who's also made reference to as a king. So evidently, he's 
the political and the religious leader of, of a group of people. And this is pre-David and pre-Temple and pre-Ark of the Covenant and pre-Ten Commandments. This is way back in the time of Abraham, where God had made the promise to Abraham, from you I will make a great nation, and that nation will bless all nations of the world. Whoa, so we're going way back, because priests, including the high priests, only came from the Levitic line, which was, Aaron, remember Aaron was the first great high, the first priest, okay, under Moses. And so now you have this going, Jesus being called the great high priest. You can only get the priest from the line, the Levites. Uh-uh. Well, that's the way it was in Jesus' day. But now, what the author of Hebrews is saying is, we can go back before that because it was happening in the line of Melchizedek, who was a priest. And we have that scripture in Psalm 110 that says so. So, what it continues to do in Hebrews chapter 5 is talks about how Jesus, as our great high priest, offers intercession for us. And it's going to get a little complicated once you get a little further into Hebrews, where he actually becomes the sacrifice as well. But for now, talks about Jesus' own humanity. How here in, in verse 7, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Now, what's happening right there? That's Gethsemane. That's Gethsemane. A, a pretty obvious reference to that. Could be a reference to something else in Jesus' life, too, that we don't know about, but that's probably what it is. And then when it talks about that uh, he was able to be saved from death, that's the resurrection. That's the resurrection. He was raised from the dead. So that's where it's going to end in our reading right here. So don't get too freaked out by this whole reference to Jesus being the great high priest. It made a lot of sense to the people who were reading this, the people with deep Jewish roots who still considered themselves the people of God. And they were the people of God, faithful people of God. But now they celebrate Jesus, not only as Messiah, but as the great high priest. Well, blessings be with you. I think uh, this rooster's telling me, hey, get out there and feed the rest of my, my family. Because right now, he's the only one that's out and running around. And why is that? Because he was sitting on some hay bale in the barn. And I didn't feel like crawling out there and grabbing him and throwing him in with one of the coops. So that's where he spent the evening. And also, I want to get to him before, before he comes over here and grabs the rest of my muffin. God's blessings be with you. And enjoy this beautiful autumn day.